introduce you to Martin Owens. Martin Owens is a longtime um, user experience centric uh, Inkscape developer. Um, he's also a streamer. He does regular streams on his Inkscape UI developments and is very, I would say, passionate about making sure users who, even those users who can't code, have an ability to have a say in their tools. And that's kind of part of this whole event's theme is these tools that are open source and free, we all have um, ownership in them. Well, anyway, I'll let I'll let Martin take it away. Thank, thanks, Mo. Thank you for jo joining, joining me on this presentation. Um, I'm going to be ta talking about the multi-page fe features that I developed. Um, I actually developed them the year before last, and they were released last April. Um, and we're going to be walking through some of the, um, just the, the basics, because this isn't a very long talk. Um, okay, so so the first thing to note is I'm going to be using the multi-page fe features to actually do this presentation. So the first time I've done a presentation using Inkscape. So uh, let's see how it goes. Um, the first thing you, you'll notice is, is that I'm sharing the screen in Inkscape. And at the very bottom in the status bar, there's actually a page um, uh, arrows where you can navigate between the, the, the previous and next pa pages. And you can actually have a drop drop down of pa pages. So I'm going to be using this as a, sort of like a way to go through these as if they were slides. Um, OK, so an introduction to pa pages. The first thing is, is that uh, Inkscape is an SVG editor, and SVG does not have pages. We worked with the uh, World Wide Web Consortium for a number of years to try and get them to add multiple page support into the SVG specification, and they wouldn't really let us. Um, this is mostly because web browsers don't really like the con concept of multiple pa pages, but it left us with a bit of a problem because, we, you know, as Inkscape developers, we want to stick to the specification as much as possible, but we also want to serve our, our users with the fun functionality that they need. So what we've had to do is we've developed an Inkscape-specific multiple page document. Um, they said it couldn't be done, but it is possible as long as you're willing to break the rules. Um, the way in which pages work is there is a first page, which uh, is basically the same as it always was in Inkscape. It is the SVG documents. It is the thing that shows in um, previews and thumbnails. And if you load it into a web browser, that's what you'll see. Um, and then there is um, other parts that are outside of that page, which are other pages. The only thing that a page really is, is just an area of the ca canvas, which is defined. And then we use that area in order to do things like exporting it, importing pa 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 pages and organizing them, and snapping and various other fun fun functionality. Um, because they're just areas of a page, uh, of the can canvas, I should say, you can actually have sub -pa pages. So here I have, you can see, a page that's inside of another page. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you by using the Pages tool, which is the very bottom on the left-hand side. Um, you can actually select paid, paid pages and move them around and obviously use these controls to resize them and obviously use a preset list of size, sizes as well. Um, you can set la labels using the tool, toolbar as you can with a, every other Inkscape tool. And then uh, essentially this just allows you to control the, ver the very basics of it are that the page has a position and it, the page has a size. Um, and then if you want to get complicated, the page has a label. Um, so pages, actually, yeah, you, you can see the move, moving around. You, you can also delete them as well. I should point, point that out. So as you move through the pages, oh, just get this one. There's something very important to understand is that when we did a user study on people interacting with these features, it became very apparent that just having an area of the screen that was defined as a page was confusing to a lot of people because there are two different types of modes that you think about. One is that the um, th that an object is essentially owned by the page. And if you move the page, you expect the objects to be moved along with it. And another is that a page is just a bounded shape. It's just a rectangle that you can move. And this creates all sorts of in, in interesting things of like, how do you explain to the user the difference between um, having ob objects that 
you know, that will actually move around and, you know, be owned by or contained within. And, you know, when do you want to just define a shape? We actually decided to go with the, 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 the shape definition for the, for the technical basis, but that didn't mean that the functionality had, had to be limited to that. So one example is, is that on the toolbar, this piece of fun functionality gets confused. There's a, there's a previous and next uh, buttons and people uh, use these to navigate the pages, but this is actually incorrect. The the bottom status bar is how you navigate. Uh, oh, not perfectly, obviously. Uh, yeah, okay. And the the toolbar is actually how you move the page pages around. So if I select this page, which is page A, and I deselect de this this option that says move objects with page and then i select move after next you'll see that like nothing appears to have changed right page a is still exactly where it is um but it actually has changed because there is an order to these pa pa pages that's inside of the, the document so if you were to export it to a pdf for example or print it out then this is the order that you would you would end up with uh, but mo most people find, find this very, very confusing. Like, I expected the page to move. And so this is why you have move objects with page as an option. And you can s select it. And you can see now, when you move them backwards and forwards, the actual objects move along with, with them, and the page itself moves. Um, this hopefully should encapsulate most of the fun functionality that people expect to see when they're ta talking about multiple paid pages. Um, oh, I should point out that uh, the version of Inkscape that you're seeing right now is the development ver version. So there may be some uh, parts of the, the user interface that are uh, unexpected from the version that you currently have access to as a state stable, which is 1.2. 1, 1. Um, OK, so let's move on. Uh, now I'm going to talk about some of the things in Inkscape 1.3. 1, 1, 1. Um, I had more requests from the people who fund me in my Patreon to like improve some more aspects, margins, bleeds, some templating, extensions, and printing. Printing is uh, a mistake. I, it really should have been able to do print printing from the start, but um, I forgot. Um, but margins and bleed are actually very, very, very interesting. And you can see in uh, this document here, there's a new box next to the page size, which allows you to set margins, and then an advanced option that allows you to set bleeds. Uh, most users won't generally have to use the bleed, but it's there and, and so we can export it and do interesting things. Uh, that These things will probably continue need to need to be developed um, since we need to do some more user experience testing. Um, there are some online controls for the mar margins. That's what these cir circular controls are, which you pr probably wouldn't see on a, an older ver version of Inkscape. Um, when I talk about templating, um, this is essentially the, 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 this entire drop down with page sizes has been completely redone so that it is uh, using the same page size system that you do that you see in the start screen and that you see in the new from template screen. Um, this allows you to do things like load in specific templates and save tem te templates and then use them as a page size la later, which can be very, very useful. Um, extensions allow you to actually write uh, some page stuff in, in, in extensions. So there's basically more support for page, page, page pages in the actual Inkex Python li library, as well as being um, just the accessible through tem tem templating. Um, hopefully these fe features will be useful, uh, but please do test them because we, I, I depend upon entirely upon users being able to uh, try out these things before we release them and tell me where we broke broken things. Um, okay, so that's the core of what I, I was going to talk to talk about. I know it's not a very long talk because I think there's going to be questions, and uh, and and people will probably ask me more in depth things. Um, so please do uh, let me know. Marion uh, Mo says the, the, the drop down in the upper left will now show the page temp template site sizes seen elsewhere in, in Escape UI. Yes, that's that's correct. I was just taking live notes as you were talking. talking. Oh no, that's not to do with this. Yeah. So what, one of the things I didn't talk about was the um, the way in which you can now import. So you, I, I, 
no, Jesse's not sh sharing it. I, I, I can see it. Um, but imagine for the for, for instance that I've selected file Im import and that I'm now importing a file. Uh, one of the options that pops up is uh, essentially to add the pages that are inside of the SVG or PDF on top of the ones that you have. So if you wanted to concatenate a whole bunch of files, uh, you can actually do do that. Um, there is not in this version of Inkscape, but uh, obviously with multiple page support, you need to be able to export uh, your pages. And it wouldn't be enough to just export single page pages as individual files. We also needed to be able to export all of these pages into one document. Uh, 1.2, you can actually select in the new export di dialog, uh, PDF or SVG. Both of these will support multiple page pages. Um, by default, in 1.2, it's a simple uh, direct matter of it'll export all of the page pages. In 1.3, I, I, the, the next week's video is actually me showing the features that I've been developing very recently, which is an improvement to this export dialogue that allows you to select which pages you, you want to export. So imagine, for example, you wanted to export just five of them uh, to one PDF file, then this should allow you to do, do that. Um, you'll have to imagine something a bit like this backpatch export, but sitting here in where these image size widgets are. Uh, and it has some support for page, page pages. Yeah, so so um, page support is one of those things that I developed as a, as a fundamental technology inside of Inkscape so that over time it can be incorporated into more parts and more function, fun, functionality. Um, this is something that I, I wanted to be able to do so that it... Um, other developers could actually just come in and go, oh, there's a page manager object and we can just you know, facilitate whatever fun functionality we want without forgetting the fact that multiple pages existed. This was one of the concerns that other developers had when I said that I was gonna work on multiple pages is the fact that it touches a lot of things and you don't wanna break everything. Shout, shout out to uh, the Creative oh. Freedom Summit for inviting me here. Uh, it's very kind. Um, because I'm not really a designer, I'm a developer, but um, it's my intention to be able to help people with, uh, you know, being able to make their, their artwork. So R Ryan Gawley asks, what will browsers do with the SVG that have pages inco incorporated? Um, they should load the first page, and that's it. Um, all of the other objects are inside of the document, so if you're running JavaScript or some other processing, they'll still be able to access those objects, but they won't understand any of the Inkscape specific uh, namespaces, so they won't load any, anything. Uh, are you seeing slides for your presentation as a use case, uh, like a whole presentation or a single multi-page document, um, or for each slide diagrams separately? What are, pre are the presenting options? So I am using this a bit cute cutely because I can show you the Inkscape in interface at the same time as showing you uh, multiple page, page pages. Inkscape has no uh, use case for um, presenting things to you, but uh, creating a slideshow, exporting it as a PDF file, and then using a, a typical presentation tool to show a PDF should actually be pretty good. Um, I've used it with Big Blue Button, where you can upload a PDF file and then use that as a presentation. Um, and that worked very well. Will we ever see Pantone color support in Inkscape uh, PMS colors, or is that some, something out of the scope of the software? Um, technically, well, I'm not a lawyer, but Pantone is a protected, uh, is it trademarked or copyrighted? Probably both. He it's a heavily protected color scheme that Inkscape cannot use. Um, it might be possible for an independent um, construction of the color palette uh, that are either has completely different names with ink mi mixes that are the same, or uh, you could buy a license from Pan Pantone that allows you to install it as an extension, but Inkscape itself could never ship with it, for example. Um, but color support in general is something I've, I've been work, working on in 2022, the end of. Um, uh, you should check out some of the videos. It's a long road, I'm going to say, for getting color support into Inkscape up to scratch. A page can be inside a page. How does that work? Okay, so so because a page is only defined by its position on the cam canvas, um, your squares can be inside other squares. 
is basically it. It's, it's, it's just a way of saying, you know, it's here and then there's another page here. Um, is it possible to set up a fixed gap between pages so that content can be nicely aligned to a single grid rather than manually reposition each page? Um, yeah, so um, pages themselves can actually be snapped. Uh, you should be able to use the snapping tool on the side and then select uh, page borders, I think grids, yeah. So it should be possible. I'm really hoping this doesn't crash now because I'm using the developer ver version. Document properties, grids, new regular grid. Yeah. So this, this is aligned to a grid, for example. Um, but the, the, there's no automatic way because what I've done is I've, in, when you're importing new page pages or you're creating a new page, it, it just has a fixed offset in the code to say, oh, just shove it to the left of the last page by this amount. Um, it's a bit crude. And in the future, I would hope to improve it. Question, are coordinates, say the X coordinate per page or per whole document? I think I noticed the other day, version 1.2, that I had to calculate the X coordinate on page two of a doc document instead of just entering saying 15 millimeters like on page one. Yeah, so in 1.2, all coordinates are uh, relative to the first page. So you'll find uh, essentially that the um, the the um, ruler at the top, and when you when you go to place objects, uh, they'll all be relative to the very top uh, left hand corner of the first page. In one point three, there's actually an option. You can either have that, or you can have uh, per page support. Um, I should have added that to my list of features, but yeah. So so uh, you'll notice that this rectangle that I've created on this on this tiny tiny little page actually has an x coordinate of zero uh, and a y coordinate of zero um, and so that that should be fixed is there a way uh, to share templates sure yeah so if you save as a temp template it creates an SVG file and then you can just give that SVG file to somebody else um, and they can then put that file into their templates folder. folder. Um, although, you know, the, the way the way that I would do it is I would open the SVG file in Inkscape and then use the file save, uh, save tem tem template. That way it'll save it into the correct fo folder for, for them and they don't have to think about wh where it is on their system. Is Pages part of the SVG spec or is it Inkscape's own fe feature? Um, so yes, as I described at the very beginning of the stream, um, Pages is something that Inkscape tried to get into the SVG spec. Uh, we sent a representative to the uh, World Wide Web Consortium uh, working group on SVG 2.0, and they were not able to get almost anything into the SVG spec because most of the functionality that a tool like Inkscape needs for editing are not things that web browsers want to have. And ultimately, the World Wide Web Consortium is for web browsers to decide on what these specifications should should look like for them. Um, so we've had to develop pages as a fun function of ourselves. And I can actually show you what this looks like by using the XML editor very br briefly. Um, each one of the pages is one of these page nodes. It has an ID. It, you can see bleed, margin, height, width, X, Y, um, and then the lab label. So it's, it's, it's a very simple node. And the order that they appear here is the order in which they would be ex ex exported. Hopefully in the future, we might end up in a scenario where multiple pages is such a useful feature that maybe the W3C will reconsider. Time for a new editable SVG stand standard. It's, it's, not, it's not an insane idea to imagine that we should have a specification uh, driven by graphics editors from like vector editors. Because you could imagine, um, even if you invited people like uh, Adobe Illustrator people and Coral Draw uh, and Penpot and Inkscape, and we all sat down in a room, we would be able to come up with things that suit our needs better than uh, Firefox and Chrome can. And um, yeah, it's it's something that I've thought about, but I imagine that the organizational infrastructure would be quite quite considerable.
Uh, off to topic question related to Wingscape, uh, will there be support for SMXL? SM, uh, SXML. I, I don't know what SXML is. Um, I presume it's a vector for, format of some, some kind. I have I talked to the pen, pen part developers on their SVG editing work in, in, in the browser? Um, yeah, pen part is interesting because it's inside the web browser itself. Um, and they actually work around the SVG spec. So when they do text, for example, they do it in an entirely Inkscape incompatible way by doing foreign objects with HTML inside of it. So they really have a blended approach of both SVG and HTML. And I'm not entirely sure what to do about that because the only way to support importing those files into Inkscape would be now to include an entire web browser in, into Inkscape. And I really don't want to do do that. Um, but maybe there's some you know place we can get, get to where, it, where we can make, for instance, SVG 2.0 text support work well enough. Because that's, that's the other problem is that uh, SVG 2 wasn't supported by browsers. Even, even the things that they agreed to support haven't been implemented. And so SVG is sitting there with text, with very, very incomplete text support. Um, Inkscape has now implemented uh, three separate text implementations, and only one of which has, has been supported by browsers. Um, it, it feels like I'm ragging on browsers and the, the, the working group. The, 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 real, the real answer is that they have very different focuses. OK, are there any other quest questions? Yeah, if we've got to everybody, um, I'm happy to break it. There anything is, is what would you want to add to Inkscape if you could? That's that's what I'm going to ask everybody for the last handful of minutes. If you could like wave, wave a magic wand and add one thing to Inkscape. <laughs> yes, surprise. It was a quiz all, all along. A knife tool. That's for basically cutting shapes in half. That's cool. Yeah, you know, one one of the nice things we have coming out in Inkscape one one point three is the shape builder tool. So, not quite a knife tool, but it is fun. So fast rent rent rendering. Yes, uh, we have a guy um, called PBS who has been working on multi -thread threading and GPU support. It's uh, it's a bit of a slug. CMYK supporter I have been working on, and it is. Um, I will say what I said in a few videos. Inkscape has supported CMYK for years and years and years, but we support CMYK in SVG, which is entirely useless because who the hell is going to print an SVG? You need support for the CMYK in PDF, and that's the that's the problem. Uh, there's a hacky way to add underlines in, via CSS and XML, but no UI. Yeah, we had a developer who was adding the underline support, and then. Uh, didn't complete it because our implementation of CSS was incorrect. I still think that we should have added it anyway, simply because for simple cases, it would have worked out fine. Uh, does Inkscape support XML uh, translations? I think that is XLST. Uh, it does if you use, uh, we have a couple of extensions you can, you, you can have a look at that do XML translations. One of the merge requests that I have actually supports importing Inkscape, uh, importing PDF files and retaining their CMYK and ICC pro profile information. Um, so please do test that if you're interested. And um, we are about finished. It's uh, 11.59. I'm going to turn on my uh, sound. I don't know if you can hear me, Martin, but thank you so much for... Okay, cool. But anyway, um, we are gearing up for the next talk. 